Well, Duke, when we talk about immigration reform, there are a couple of things that I think are, are important. Number one is I got to participate in a naturalization ceremony mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it was really great to be able to shake the hands of 67 new American citizens that are excited about their citizenship, who, who made the investment of time and money and, yeah. and uh, resources to, to become legal citizens of this country. Uh, I'd like to see that, in many cases, they know more about our country than the people coming through our school systems today. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to find a way to make that process uh, simpler and quicker, not to take the quality out of it, but to make it less burdensome mm -hmm. so that it's those people that do want to become citizens uh, don't have to stop their lives for seven to ten years to do it. They can actually carry on life and get their citizenship. I'd say in three to five would be a much better solution. The second thing has to do with those people that want to come here and work but don't want to become citizens and th they do that through a, a worker visa mm -hmm. program. To me the visa program ought to be based on what our labor needs are in this country. Uh, for instance, one of the areas where we don't have enough uh, domestic um, uh, workforce is in the high-tech industries. And so you have students that come over, they get their masters and PhDs in some of our leading universities in the country, uh, but then they can't stay here very long and they have to go home. Well, we'd like to keep those people here, mm -hmm. keep them as taxpayers, keep, or, keep them as contributors to the things that we do best in high-tech. So we ought to have a high-tech visa. And the numbers ought to be set based on what we need, not mm -hmm. some artificial cap like we have today. Um, there are hotels in this town and also down in Bryan College Station that can't get enough hospitality help. And so to me, we ought to have a hospitality visa uh, that gives enough visas out to, to satisfy what the labor needs are. Mm -hmm. uh, when these employers can't find um, indigenous Americans to work in those jobs. Mm -hmm. So to me, we ought to have that, maybe a migrant farm worker visa uh, like we've had in, in decades mm -hmm. past. Uh, there ought to be a, a visa designed for whatever a particular niche is, and mm -hmm. it ought to be driven, the numbers of those visas ought to be driven by the job demands that remain unfulfilled, unfilled by Americans. So would that be something that maybe uh, in, the, in the district, local businesses in a district might submit their numbers mm -hmm. and request and then uh, we base it uh, on the local needs versus what a few people decide, or you know, decided right. 20 years ago. Right. Instead of a bunch of bureaucrats, mm -hmm. or even worse, a bunch of people in Congress deciding how many visas ought to be granted, you let the the labor market determine it. Mm -hmm. But again, you do it in such a way where it does not displace an American who wants a job. Mm -hmm. It only it only allows an employer uh, to hire somebody when they have. Uh, a need that can't be fulfilled by an American. So they'd, they'd bring them in, they'd, they'd prove that they could pay, uh, they would uh, prove that they could provide health insurance and that they're going to pay taxes for them. Again, Texas going back solution. to the Texas solution, right, right. exactly. So go back to that. That's, that's what I think we need to do, but it's based on what the market tells us it needs versus mm -hmm. what a bunch of folks in Washington yeah, think I think, 